So you have to wonder, has the Dark Jedi received word from the Hot Toys wizard on some of these figures that you see up on the banner right here? Could Hot Toys actually be poised, announcement-wise and production-wise, to finally give us the Poe Dameron from the sequels? Doesn't that seem impossible? How about Bay's Malbus from Rogue One? I mean, I must be so drunk on this coffee over here. How about Obi-Wan Kenobi from the Attack of the Clones? Surely the 20th anniversary of Attack of the Clones has to be passe. In the past, nothing else could be coming, right? How about Luke at a Tauntaun? Look, with all this coffee, maybe I need to shake it up a little bit with some wizard juice to try and sober up. Mm. Well, let's see if this actually helps. So let's go ahead and dive into all of this. Right now! Hey, hey, and all right. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Aries Tarrington's Drunk God Coffee right here at Aries Cantina, home of Six Scale Cantina. Please go ahead and smash that like button. I so do very much appreciate your support. And hey, while you're at it, please also go ahead and subscribe to the Cantina. Again, thank you so much for your support. Let's go ahead and start off with Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan Kenobi from the Attack of the Clones. I don't think that this was a miss from Hot Toys. The first wave of thrills from the Attack of the Clones 20th anniversary was on May 4th. We got R2-D2, C-3PO, a clone trooper, a clone pilot, and a battle droid. That's five. All in one day. They made a statement. Shortly after that, they said, stay tuned for the next wave of thrills. Now, some of us thought that with that Padme Amidala and Anakin Skywalker from Attack of the Clones at the beginning of December, that that was your next wave of thrills. But was it just a part of a wave? Because just a few weeks later, baby, Right before New Year's, Hot Toys shocks us and has us spill our coffee all over the place with a super battle droid and, of course, Mace Windu with the Samuel L. Jackson head sculpt. Are you kidding me? That's four figures. Is it possible we're missing one? At least one. If so, why and who is it potentially? Look, these two are two peas in a pod. You're talking about master and Padawan, teacher and student. My goodness gracious. We've got the Anakin coming. We've got Padme coming. Gosh, we got Mace Windu coming. And did they not give us this one at that time because they wanted to first make sure collectors and fans knew that they weren't going to hold back on the Clone Wars 20th anniversary and actually give us a really long-awaited figure 
that Clone Wars General Kenobi, which they really did, just a few days after, basically, that Mace Windu and Battle Droid, if you really think about it, it was a short time afterwards. And what a coffee spiller that was to start off the new year with the Clone Wars Obi-Wan. And a lot of us were starting to lose hope on that. But I'll be honest with you. They've been all about fulfilling fans' dreams since April 13th of 2022 with that DX-25 Skywalker, baby. You know what I'm talking about. And from there, they have made drop after drop that we spilled our coffee over all the way turned over. Unbelievable. And if it wasn't with a drop, it was with a tease. And if it wasn't with a tease, it was with a teaser. An official one. And I think that they've been trying to make a statement that Everything that we've been calling for, they have it on their docket to give us. Here's this Here's this Clone Wars Kenobi. And do I think they wanted to just put this one out for the first figure for 2023, for the 20th anniversary for the Clone Wars? I do. I really, really do. Which is why I think they held back on giving us the Obi-Wan Kenobi from the Attack of the Clones. But does this mean that in 2023 that we won't get the Obi-Wan Kenobi from the Attack of the Clones? And look, I actually believe that we're going to get it. And we're going to get it in the 20th anniversary packaging. This figure here is going to be up on pre-order sometime between May to July of this year. Let's first understand that. Then it's going to eventually get the low stock warning. And anywhere between a three to seven month window. And then it's going to go on wait list. And either right over the next several months or right in conjunction with that. Is it possible that we go ahead and actually get the last remaining piece for the Attack of the Clones? 20th anniversary? And I say, yes. Smile. Spill your coffee now. Flip it over, baby! It's coming. It's absolutely coming. And besides these two being two peas in a pod, (laughs) peanut butter or jelly, if you will, I mean, if you go back to the Obi-Wan series last year, they used this look in the flashback like you're seeing on the screen in that awesome, awesome flashback battle sequence, training sequence that they had, Obi-Wan and Anakin. And I don't believe that there is a chance that they're going to miss out on an opportunity, Hot Toys, to give us this figure. And there's no law that any company has to just give us anniversary packaging within a certain year. Hasbro gives us packaging like that. They can continue with it the year before, the year after. It's not that it's over. And quite frankly, is it possible that we also get more from the Attack of the Clones 20th anniversary? I think that we could. I think that there's a potential for a Yoda with a chair, which would be different than the one that was reissued twice. I also think we can get a Dooku with a speeder bike. And even if it didn't come in the 20th anniversary packaging, it makes all all the sense in the world for this figure to come out because you have so many figures including this Anakin figure 
that goes well with this Obi-Wan figure. And people who are going to buy this figure and are going to buy the Padme figure and the Mace figure, any of the Attack of the Clothes figures, would be hard-pressed to skip out on this look of Ewan McGregor in the Attack of the Clones, the major motion picture from Hot Toys. Hard-pressed to skip out on this outfit. I remember what I've been telling you. For months and months and months, and for a couple of years already, Hot Toys will be putting out more and more announcements, less production of those announcements, and more reuses of R&D. So, to be able to put another figure out of this, especially when you have that attack of the uh, the uh, Clone Wars Obi-Wan that'll hit waitlist over the current mechanism that they have right now over the next several months makes all the sense in the world. And furthermore, when you got characters like this, more and more reuses of molds, more and more announcements, less production, less time on pre-order, you're going to get multiples and multiples of very popular characters up on pre-order at the same time and passing each other within the night. Going from on pre-order to both pre on pre-order, one going on a low stock order to wait list, another one popping up. So, get ready to spill your coffee, baby. Because I believe this is a walk as an announcement. For 2023. Or. If they're planning it as an exclusive. And this is already done. And they'll probably be coming out with that Padme. And that. Uh, Anakin maybe earlier this year. Earlier than anticipated. It could be. Earlier than anticipated. It could be. Sometime even in the third quarter. Or fourth quarter. Of this year. Can you even imagine. A companion piece like this Obi-Wan Kenobi. Wow. Wow. Coffee spilled. And there's not a chance that I would miss out on this. Uh, and I tell you what. I don't think that they dropped the ball on this. I think that they are being very strategic. And this is coming in 2023. Well, well, we'll see if the wizard juice keeps helping. Let's pause for some. All right. Baze Malbus. Let's talk about him. He's on the banner here. Look, I'm basically going to talk about Baze and Poe in the same way. Ed, I understand some of you are going to tell me, well, Rogue One, there wasn't much controversy. With the sequels and Poe Dabrin, there's a lot of controversy. You know what? The controversy of the sequels, let's actually go to the sequels. The controversy, baby, of The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker was anything but coffee spilling. It was cup smashing. It was like a slobber knocker of terribleness when it came to Star Wars. Thank goodness that's over. Thank goodness. But it was so bad, baby. Companies did not want to touch anything toys or collectibles when it came to Star Wars. You couldn't even get Hasbro. Listen carefully. You could not even get Hasbro to do a three and three quarter inch line with the rise of Skywalker. The first time in Star Wars history that they didn't do a three and three quarter inch line. <laughs> and forget about the Black Series line. They hardly made any figures for the Rise of Skywalker. And you still had all those Last Jedi Black Series and all those figures and exclusives available. You want to talk about the bargain bin.
Nobody wanted to touch anything. Nobody was making anything. During those times, Hot Toys couldn't even move the... You always hear about the Emperor in the Throne. It sat in stock. The Dark Side Anakin, it sat in stock. And they didn't make much of this, the same way they were making with figures uh, you know, during the Mandalorian times or before these times. Of course they were going to sit in stock. Nobody wanted to make anything Star Wars. They didn't even touch the three and three quarter inch line for the Rise of Skywalker. And every time that they would touch any three and three quarter inch line, they wouldn't just give you the new movie figures. They would give you figures from other movies, figures from the past. They didn't want to touch anything. They have that license with Disney and with Star Wars to make figures that they wanted to get in and out of that real quick, fast and in a hurry with that film. And is that the reason why, you know, during The Force Awakens and after and during those times, you see the DX-25, you see the Bespin Luke, and you see the, you see the Padme, and you see the, all these other figures during Rogue One, and, and, and Baze and Malbus, and, and cool stuff like this, and, but, you know, then The Force Awakens ends, and that was pretty good, and made $2 billion, and everyone was mostly happy, and Rogue One came out, and everybody was thrilled, and, but then nothing was coming out. Because Star Wars was an all for all intents and purposes, merchandise wise, dead. Of course, Howard said back in those times he wasn't going to do any more sequel figures. Neither was Hasbro, neither was Gentle Giant, neither was any of these companies doing anything. But let me ask you a question. A figure that was in the crypt like this. The DX-25 Luke. Why did that come out? Other figures from the crypt. From Padme to so many others. Why have they suddenly been coming out? Is it because of the Mandalorian? Is it possible Baby Yoda, now known as Grogu, has something to do with it? Has something to do with it? Have, has John Favreau and Dave Filoni waved their magic wands and somehow magically put Star Wars back where it belongs and on the map? And I say, thank God. Grogu's like the hottest thing in Asia right now. He's the hottest thing anywhere. And when was the last time we had a season of that? We saw him for a few times or a couple of times anyway in a couple of episodes of the Book of Boba Fett. And... Will more figures from the crypt emerge now that Star Wars is healing? Now that Star Wars is so hot? Now that you're seeing references to so many sequel characters and sequel plot points in Favreau's work, in Filoni's work, in Deborah Chow's work, in the work on Disney+. Plus. And going right with Baze Malbus... You want to talk about companion pieces that this goes with? Let's talk about collectors, baby. Collectors like me. Let's use me for an example. I'm going to use that. And I'm going to pull this up onto the screen. I have Chirrut Emily. The deluxe version. I have Jyn Erso, The Imperial Disguise version. And you have to wonder, am I longing? Am I thirsting? Am I prepared to spill and spit up my coffee at the announcement of a base of Albus to go into my collection, into my detoff, into my museum poses 
with characters that are longing to spill their coffee as well with a missing friend? And I say, yes, come on. Don't tell me they can't sell as many of these as Peacemaker. Don't tell me they can't sell as many of these as the Arita Soup Boba Fett. Or the Chrome Plated Clone Trooper. And they're making head sculpts left and right now with low production runs. Whether it's Keanu Reeves figures. The Kate Bishop figure. The John Cena figure. Any of these figures. Low runs. Riva and the Grand Inquisitor, the, the, the Inquisitors are going to be some of the lowest runs and some of the lowest head sculpts you've ever seen. Run. Cobb Vanth, a lot of these characters, low runs. Baze Malbus, a winner, baby. Especially. Why does this make sense besides it could be a great companion piece and collectors will buy it? Besides what I was trying to explain to you culturally, what we were dealing with at the time of the sequels, especially the later two movies, and what we're dealing with now. It's a new ball game now. And it's, <laughs> it's a new ball game. What does Bayes Valbus have to do with the sequels? Everything, baby. Everything. You couldn't even get rid of an emperor on his chair. You couldn't even get rid of a dark side Anakin at this time. You couldn't get rid of any of these figures during this time. During these dark times. It was bad. And they sure as hell were not going to be coming out with a Baze Malbus. Or a DX-25 Luke. Or a Poe Dameron. There's Oscar Isaac and Hot Toys figures, Secret Base. They didn't cancel this. Disney didn't cancel this. Hot Toys didn't cancel this. A lot of these figures were placed on hold. They were in the crypt. Waiting to come out of the crypt. Waiting to rise like pre-order zombies. figure would be outstanding look at that look at that right there baby would you have any problem moving as many of these as peacemaker moving as many of these as the neo from the matrix or the Whatever the video game Johnny thing is there. The Avatar figures they just came out with. And I understand the movie's pop. The movie's popular everywhere. Avatar in Asia or in any country is not a big toy line. It's very popular everywhere. This would sell more than any of those. Would he sell as much as Din Djarin? No way. As much as Luke? Not even close. Come on. Can you get rid of a few thousand of him? My goodness. You want to talk about companion pieces. We brought up Chirrut. And we brought up Jin Ursa. My goodness. All the companion pieces for Poe Dameron? Kylo Ren. How many Kylo Rens? Ray Skywalkers. How many Ray Skywalkers? Last I checked, Ray is very high. Whether it's The Last Jedi, whether it's her, the BB 8 set, especially that Ray and Dio rising again. 
And when you talk about the main characters that this goes with, Chewbacca is off the charts when it comes here. Han Solo continues to go up for The Force Awakens. Of course, you got the great Luke. All the Leia's are going up. A lot of people that have these figures. Even the ones that are duds. Even the ones that don't sell very high in the secondary market. You want to use some of those Kylos. You want to use Phasma. You want to use those troopers. You want to use Finn without the uh, Stormtrooper disguise. A lot of collectors still have these figures that are missing one and the only missing main character left. Well, I shouldn't say that. Main character from all three movies left in Oscar Isaac and Poe Dameron. You got one with Lando missing from The Rise of Skywalker. But don't worry. That is sure as heck coming as well. And yes, I know. Maybe I need to take even more wizard juice here. But I understand that I brought up Lando. And we haven't even sold out this Lando yet, baby. But again, let me point out to you that they made way too many of this Lando. Way too many of that best car Mandalorian. Way too many of that Tusken Raider. That doesn't mean they're not going to make new variations of them. It's just that when they do, baby, they're going to make them in lower quantities. Case in point. I love data, and I love analyzing this stuff with you. we still got a lot of Bobas in stock. And who knows how long they're going to be in stock. But that Arena Soup Boba Fett's not in stock. And that didn't prevent them from coming out with that Arena Soup Boba Fett, baby. Not a lot of you spilled your darn coffee over. Boom. And is it possible that would be the same way with a Billy D. Williams Lando Calrissian figure from the sequels? You know, we have Han Harrison Ford older from the sequels, a figure for that. We have Carrie Fisher and Leia Organa older from the sequels as well. And, of course, we have Luke Skywalker, Mark Hamill from the sequels older as well. And I feel like we're missing Billy D. Williams from the sequels, baby. I mean, you know that you want the figure... I mean, come on. Come on. Let's see if I can blow it up and put it up on the screen for you, baby. That'll work just fine. <laughs> now, look, if they made as many of this as they did with the Lando from The Empire Strikes Back, of course it'll sit in stock for forever and a day. They make it, like, in low quantities like they're doing right now. And then having it sit up there for several months and then have the low stock warning and then be done? Come on. Under this view, and with the new mechanism that they have in place right now, listen carefully, this pre-order only mechanism, figures like this Lando are an absolute lock in my opinion. You don't need to make very many of them. Because many of us wouldn't be buying them, just like many of us weren't interested in that Arena Soup Boba Fett. Many of us weren't interested in the chrome-plated Chrome Trooper. Many of you are not going to be interested in Cobb Vanth, or the Grand Inquisitor, or the Third Sister. But they're putting them out anyway. Why do you think they're putting out those other two Inquis Inquisitors? They know it's not going to be gangbusters like the Mandalorian. But they're still going to put them out, baby. This is a prime candidate where it wasn't a prime candidate in times past because of that sequels fiasco and because of their older mechanism. But with this new mechanism? Wow. Yes. I say yes on this. I say Yes. On this. 
And I say yes on this. Oof, that looks good. And I also say yes. I also say yes on this. So you have to wonder, wonder. It's so cold at table 44. For those of you watching, you never watch, you got to watch me live because the coldest table at Aries Cantina, six scale Cantina, is table 44. And Luke and the Todd Todd and Han and the Todd Todd sit at table 44 where it's cold. Mr. Freeze sits there too. So does the abominable snowman. So do I, from time to time. Zero, dear. I think we're automatically assuming that the battle damaged from the DX25 uh, uh, will be the next figure coming. And it would be real, real interesting if instead of giving that figure to us, they instead give us this Luke Skywalker from the Empire Strikes Back. Can you even imagine? And it, uh, can you even imagine? Can you even imagine? And I know we're all thinking that we're going to get Han Solo from for uh, the Endor, the Return of the Jedi, or a Han Solo from Bespin. But could you even imagine if they went Mando Quill on us? And gave us Han and Luke from the Empire Strikes Back, held back on the battle damage Bespin one, to kind of save that for the next year, give one us give us one of those there. I just, I'm just, I just feel this. I just want this. I would just spill all my damn coffee on this. Look, we got Blurg. We got Quill. We got Mando and Blurg. Can we get Todd Todd? Can we get Luke? Can we get Hot? Oh my goodness gracious. And I tell you why I have so much faith in this. Low production numbers and more and more announcements and more reuses of head sculpts, more reuses of R&D already invested. Look, the proof's in the pudding, baby. The DX25 Luke sat up at number one for, forever, forever, during a Doctor Strange movie that was hot in the theaters. During, uh, uh, I think, I don't know, Moon Knight or one of the, the big uh, series. There's a bunch of series up. There was nothing really going on with Star Wars at the moment. And a figure from 1980, Sideshow saw, ooh, we made somebody. Hot Toys saw, ooh, we made somebody. You put this up, I venture to guess you maybe make a little more money on this. And I'll be honest with you. A release of the Tauntaun... Is it possible that it makes the Blurg more desirable? And I say, yes. Why? You get a collector like me. You give me a figure like this with a taunt on like this. I'm all. Of a, I'm. Not, I'm gonna buy it. But I'm all of a sudden gonna be interested now in some other beasts. Just by default, it's just how I am and how some collectors are. One thing leads to another. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Gosh, they gave me that DX25 Luke Skywalker last year, and I was interested in everything that they had, no matter what it was. And now that they're giving me all this heat, baby, I just keep spilling my coffee. I'll take the frog lady. I'll take all the Mandalorian figures you want to give me. Heck. Come on. You give me a Tauntaun? Man. 
Man, I you, and you want to talk about you want to talk about advertising. I mean, God, this would go insane. You want to talk about advertising. You want to talk about free advertising. Just imagine how smart it would be on Hot Toys. Howard, are you watching? You want free advertising and marketing? You know this is going to be on my show. This is going to be on a lot of the community show, all my friend shows. Not just for a day and gone. Not just for a week and gone. This would be this would be like for ever. Every show you could imagine. Top of the news, busting the internet. We talk about that if they did a prisoner Leia, hut slayer Leia, busting the internet. You talk about if you did that with a Cara Dune, busting the internet. You thought the internet busted with Ahsoka. You thought the internet busted with Captain Rex. With that two-pack Boba Fett. Can you even imagine a prisoner Leia? Can you even imagine Luke or Han with a Tauntaun? Can you even imagine if they gave us Han with the Tauntaun first? <laughs> or just Han? Or you know what would be the best thing that they should do? You want to talk about dangling a damn carrot and having me spilling my coffee until they actually do it. Just release the Tauntaun. Oh yeah, we're going to give you a Tauntaun on one six scale. Where's the figure? Everybody would talk, where's the figure? Oh, the figure's got to be coming. Well, which one's first? Maybe you could talk about the Tauntaun for a damn month. Then you can release one of the figures. Release the Han first. So then you can talk about Han for another month. That's two months of advertising. Let me mark it for you. And then after that couple of months, then give us the Luke. Oh, la, la. <laughs> oh I'm going nuts. <laughs> my goodness and you know what's funny right now because just like you're seeing with the DX28 just like you're seeing with the DX28 the dark lord of the Sith the figure of all figures for right now maybe one of the best releases ever this figure right here and it's Darth Vader oh And it's not coming out for months and months, supposedly. And it has a low stock warning. Look at it, baby. Low stock warning. Low stock warning. You're seeing it on the screen. It's about to go out. And then a DX27 will go out. And eventually Cad Bane and all of them would come out. Which means, hey... You want to talk about where there's risk. This figure would not sell anywhere near like the best mid Luke. This wouldn't sell nowhere near as good as the Grand Inquisitor. People will pass and take Grand Inquisitor over Luke or Han. Whatever the argument is, great. The thing is, it doesn't matter because it's going to be a limited window anyway. So why not? You talk about an N1 Starfighter? I know that they're coming with that, but I'd much rather have a Tauntaun. Mmm. This is why you watch Aries Cantina, home of six scale Cantina. Please go ahead and smash that like button. I so do very much appreciate your support. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also very much appreciate you doing that. Remember, we're going to be having a giveaway coming up soon. I'll let you know what, what video you got to comment on to enter the video, the the, uh, the giveaway. A couple of hot toys I'm giving away. Remember, you got to be subscribed. So go ahead and just do that now so that way you're not Ill ineligible. That way when I go to go bring it to the post office, I don't say, oh, they're not subscribed. Eh. Someone else. Appreciate it. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook. We're 19 away from getting to 1,000 members on there. We talk about a lot of cool stuff. Everybody's welcome. It's like Sears. Everyone knows your name. Everyone's glad you came. 
Everybody drinks wizard juice, banana juice, off-world Jawa egg juice, tauntaun milk. We sit at table 44. Missed US 6 scale raw. Mondays, 8.15 p.m. Eastern. Couldn't do it. Something came up this week. But is it possible that I will be 6 scale raw this coming Monday? February uh, uh, 13th? And I say... Yes, we got to have a big panel in the house, a great panel. Don't forget, it's going to be great stuff. we got the market chart show coming up this weekend. Ooh, ooh, don't you want to see this tauntaun again? Um, look, go to sixscalecantita.com. I, I got my brand new unboxing of Boba Fett and the Throne. That I just put up. If it, 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 Hit the little join button on the channel. See everything that becoming a member. A Cantina Insider comes with. It's cheaper than a dozen eggs baby. Which is kind of expensive right now. For eggs. Joining my channel is cheaper. As a member. You get all kinds of cool videos. Look at this new video I'm coming out with. It's uh, a special drunk on coffee. You can only get. It's a small episode. Short episode. But as a, a, a member. Second Obi-Wan series Darth Vader. I'm telling you why it's coming and why it's coming this year. You can get exclusively on here. It's going to be coming out here uh, this weekend, next week. But I do have the Boba Fett and the Throne, which I got it from Ray at Hawk Wars Toys. Shout out to Ray at Hawk Wars Toys. Came double boxed. Came with a comic. This comic right here, baby. From Ray at Hawk Wars Toys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it when I get these double box hot toys from Ray. And uh, here you go. I got the Luke. I got the Luke Meister here. A couple stickers as well. Anyway, I did my double unboxing. Uh, my unboxing for Boba Fett and the Throne. And uh, split screen views. Picture in picture. Real high resolution. I compare it to the, uh, the two-pack Boba Fett. Which one do I like better? You have to become an insider to check it out. All you have to do, besides believe and spill coffee, is just go ahead and join the channel and check it out. Hey, if you don't like it, then you can quit it, and all you did is waste a dozen eggs. I don't always buy Wizard Juice out, but when I do, I buy it from Six Scale Cantina. Stay thirsty, my friends.